Hello everyone, welcome to the April 4th, 2014 episode of Dwarven Discussions. Uh, my name is Kelly and with me as always is Tana. And this week our topic for discussion is going to be afterthoughts on Elder Scrolls Online. But before that, I'm going to pass it over to Tana and let him tell you what the weekend deals are. Hello, and uh, this week we have a couple good ones. We have the... Humble Bundle PC and Android 9 deal, which is currently going for $3.82. Not bad. For uh, Broken Sword 2, The Smoking Mirror, uh, Bridge Constructor, Type Rider, uh, Raven Sword Shadowlands, Kingdom Rush, Knights of Pen and Paper Plus One Edition. And then on the other side of Humble Bundle, we have the Humble Weekly Sale for Destructoid. Going for $6 is Little Inferno, Super Hexagon, Natural Selection 2, Critter Crunch, Pixel Junk Monsters Ultimate, and Hotline Miami. Some good deal. Yeah, not bad. Yep, uh, so this weekend's GOG sell is Square Enix. Uh, featuring Thief Gold, Thief 2, Thief 3, all for 349 each. Uh, the Legacy of Cain games for a buck fifty each. I mean, there's a log of games on here. Uh, Tomb Raider. Uh, just really, it's one of the best GOGs I've seen in a while, and that's going to be going on for the next three days. So make sure to go over to GOG.com, take a look at that. As always, um. There will be links to all the current sales going on in the description below, so have a look. Alright, now with that over with, um, Kelly, you got your box already, right? For the CE? Yeah, I went, uh, went uptown, got my box, came back, and instantly went into a podcast, so my box is literally saying, Right next to me, almost up to armrest length, saying, please open me. <laughs> I know. The fucker's huge. Like, I'll, I'll put pictures of, like, to scale up on this part of the, uh, on this part of the podcast from a couple, like, maybe 30 seconds ago to on. And this thing is just massive. It puts all the Blizzard ones to shame. It really does. Honestly, you know what I really wish I had? I wish I had the Guild Wars 2 Collector's Edition, because I would love to compare them side by side, because I heard that one's huge, too. Oh, God, I think my sister might have that, so I'll, I'll see if she has it and see if I can get a, a picture of it. Yeah, but needless to say, I mean, I got a PS4 back when it first came out, and the boxes have slummed down over the years, but, you know, they're still big boxes. My Elder Scrolls Online uh, Imperial Edition dwarfs a PlayStation 4 console box. Just just take a moment to consider that. A game box that's bigger than a console box. It's massive. And that there's no other word for it. It's just massive. Like, okay, so the box that mine came in, because uh, I got it from... GameStop shipped uh, overnight by mail. Um, the box that it came in is... Uh, I don't even know how to describe that thing. Like, when it first came in, the my parents were like, what in the world did you order from GameStop overnight? And I just told them it's a game. And they're like, what game comes in a box that big? My chair didn't even come in a box that big. <laughs> it was so padded. I, like, oh my god. I probably could have shipped myself in that box and been fine. You know, it's probably good to mention right now. Um, it's kind of funny that... Because when, when, uh, when I was looking at the GameStop order page... The uh, mailing thing, it was like, we can't guarantee that this game will be here on day one, like when a game launches. You know, they say it it's most likely not going to be there day one. And then you look at Amazon and your whole Diablo 3 debacle, which it wasn't even just you. It was several people who ordered through Amazon, who Amazon guarantees, you know, 
launch day delivery and you as well as many other people who ordered Diablo 3 uh, didn't get theirs until the day after launch. Yeah, it's like, oh, hey, pay us, you know, this amount extra to guarantee that it'll be there on that day. And then it wasn't. And then this one was like, hey, this is probably not going to be there. And it was here when I woke up. Yeah, uh, go figure, right? Yeah. Yeah, go figure. Pay extra to have guaranteed not. Yeah, well, I'm just... I I am flabbergasted by the mere size of this, and it's really one of the most amazing collector's editions. Okay, I'm just going off the box because I haven't had a chance to open it. I know what's inside, but I haven't had a chance to actually look at my stuff. You, on the other hand, have uh, already opened yours. You've put your statue next to your box, and it looks glorious. Do you want to talk about what came with your uh, collector's edition? Okay, so... Inside this massive box, there is, of course, the game disc. And the game disc is actually, um, like, it's not just a, a plastic uh, clip-open game disc like you'd find a normal DVD or Blu-ray in. It's actually a metal case with many DVDs in it. And I actually got to get this out because I don't remember what all the discs do. Okay, that's awesome. Like, a metal case, I mean, that's already off to a good start. I I heard that there's a map of uh, the Elder Scrolls world that comes with the game. Yes, it is a gigantic poster. Like, I have not even unfolded it yet, because I don't want to rip it, and I want to have somewhere to put it first. And I'm probably going to get it framed, but it is it is just massive. Like, um... I'd say probably, I don't know, just by guessing and not unfurling it, probably 3 by 5 Oh, wow. I don't have any walls big enough for that, except the wall that my TV's mountain to. Uh, mountain to. I just like mountain do for my TV. <laughs> that my okay. uh, TV's mounted to. I don't have much in the way of wall space. Yeah. Okay, so... It looks like all four discs are actually game install discs. Uh, I don't see any, like, soundtrack or um, uh, behind-the-scenes discs. But it is actually a metal case. Which is, like... Let's see if I can hold the button down and tap it. It's actually metal. Providing quality comment, com yeah, comment, content, folks. The sound of tapping a metal case. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, you know, of course, there's the um, the CD keys. Which it, there's actually three keys to put in. Go figure. the The first one is out of the Imperial Edition is actually the Standard Edition. Go figure. The second one is upgrade to Imperial Edition. Why they couldn't just, you know, have that as one key. Done Imperial Edition, but whatever. And then the third is the Explorer's Pack code. Oh, nice. Yeah, so... Yeah, you know how we didn't get our Explorer's Pack in the, uh, in the five-day head start? Yeah, now you do. Okay, so... Yeah, see, that still surprises me, because you, you get the code to get the head start, and you'd figure that the pre-order Head Start code would also give you the Explorer's Pack, and it really falls to the same thing I hate about Warlords of Draenor with uh, digital orders getting benefits that physical orders don't, but, I mean, I don't know. That, that may be just me. Maybe I'm uh, expecting too much. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, so... Once you get your gigantic DVD out, or DVD case out, and all that stuff, to the right of that is, of course, the gigantic statue, which is a little over a foot tall, and not made of pewter, so you don't really have to worry about breaking it like that. It's actually made out of, um, uh, out of a, a resin plastic, like what you would see other, like, anime or game figurines made out of. 
like something D Arts would use, and you know, D Arts, of course, being known for really high quality action figures. Yeah, it's it's very well done. Um, you do actually have to pull the entire casing out of the box, unlike uh, with the Diablo and StarCraft ones where everything's right there. You do actually have to pull this one out because it is twisty tied in the back. And the stand and tail for the statue are underneath where the DVD is. And then there's something other else underneath there, and that is the leather-bound, or I'm guessing probably faux leather-bound art book. It is not a hardcover art book. It is actually a very well-done art book. <laughs> like, I probably would not stand this up straight. Well, actually, See, this is what this might actually be leather itself, not faux leather. This is what uh, I think is really interesting is Blizzard Entertainment for the longest time has been known to make some of the best, some of the absolute best collector's editions in at least the MMO market. And seeing so much quality and effort put into this, it's really quite astounding, especially for a first MMO. I mean... I don't know if they're making profit or loss off these collector's editions just because there's they're so much stuff in it. And, I mean, this was $100 just like the uh, Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls collector's edition was, just like the uh, World of Warcraft collector's edition will be. I mean, for $100 comparing this next to the Diablo 3 collector's edition, I think this is a much better deal. Like, they've gotta be making a loss on this oh definitely i mean uh the fact that they actually canceled a lot of the uh imperial sales and stopped places like amazon and gamestop from actually selling them on a basically a you're not allowed to take any more orders for these i'm guessing it's because they were taking too much of a loss yeah i it really makes it feel like it's a limited a, like a limited quantity collector's edition because I'm going to tell you right now I went to my GameStop today when I picked this up they've still got Mr. Pandaria boxes just saying there as well as Diablo 3 Reaper Souls boxes just saying there it's like it's kind of a sad day when a collector's edition something that's supposed to be like you know rare and for collectors like you have to like put the effort in like early to get this it is in such high quantity that it's just everywhere yeah, the the GameStop that I usually do my uh, midnight releases at still has collector's editions all the way back to BC, and wow. Yeah, it's... Except for the vanilla collector's edition, because that was an actual limited collector's edition. And if you want one of those, you gotta spend like 600 bucks on Amazon. <laughs> I want one, but not gonna happen. Not unless I win the Someday fucking lottery. Yeah, someday. <laughs> Anywho, that's the the collector's edition of awesomeness well what's contained in the act in the physical box not including what's uh online digitally yeah it's it's an amazing collector's edition i am i am very pleased with it like they've definitely put some love and care into making it actually uh you know one thing i wish i had the money to buy was uh after you know I think like a few weeks ago, it wasn't that long ago, a month ago maybe, they announced a strategy guide, official strategy guide. And I don't buy stuff like that because honestly, your best strategy guide is going to be ESO head. Uh, maybe another competitor will come around eventually, but online is going to be your best strategy guide. But the strategy guide they showed, it was $100, everything was leather bound, everything was like really nicely done. It's just like, oh, I really wish I had the money. Oh, the nice leather-bound strategy guide? I would have taken that just to have it as a book. I mean, I, I know it sounds like kind of a pointless endeavor to just, you know, I'm, I'm going to pay $100 for something that sits on a shelf, but really, it, it, it's no different than any other, you know, interesting collectible that other people spend countless amounts of money on just to put it on a shelf. Yeah. Here, I'm actually going to pull up a picture of it for you, and I'm going to link that to you in 
event. But anyway, there's the uh, there's the um, guide, the hero's guide, which is like a hundred bucks. Oh my god, that is amazing! I want that. Yeah, I want that too. But again, it's limited edition, so I doubt that you're going to be able to get one, except for maybe resale. Yeah, Amazon, a Amazon resale and eBay resale, and God knows I'm going to be paying out the teeth for that. Yeah, it's it's nice. I I would love to have that, but it's it's really something that I appreciate personally is seeing how much care and how much love has gone into the physical packaging, and I just I love it. It's it's something that actually says, hey, you know, we're living in a world where we're entering the digital age where everything's downloaded, everything's digital, and we understand that people still like physical, and they're basically saying, hey, we still care about you even if you're not digital, so you know, we made it worthwhile for you to go physical, check out all this cool stuff you get. And it's just, it's so nice. It makes me feel appreciated. And, I don't know, I love it. I love it too. I, I mean, it's its just amazing how much work they put into this compared to the other collector's editions I have. I mean, yeah, the boxes for the other collector's editions look cool, but what's inside of it is like... 30 bucks for the stuff. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing when you think about and, like, look at it this way. Uh, Diablo 3, I, I'm making this comparison because, you know, Reaper Souls just came out as the most recent yeah. comparison I can think of. When the original Diablo 3 came out, it was like 100 bucks. You know, you get the standard art book, behind the scenes DVD, music CD, game install CD, and then you get a whole bunch of digital stuff for other games. You get um, Pet for World of Warcraft. You get Portraits for StarCraft 2, and then you got uh, Wings for Diablo 3. And uh, did I mention the Diablo 3 skull with the USB? No, not yet, but you just did. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, the little statuette, the little uh, skull statue, and I don't remember the size of the USB, but Two like gig. a USB that's shaped like a soul stone. Yeah, it's, it's not the size that really matters. I mean, it's, it's something small. It's just, it was really nice. And that USB came with, preloaded on it, Diablo 2 and Diablo 2 Lord of Destructions. That is a good collector's edition. That comes with a bunch of stuff. Whereas if you look at the Reaper of Souls collector's edition, by comparison, you don't get the little statuette, you don't get the USB drive, you know, with the two games before that, which back then was like $20, 30 that you just got for free. Um, you don't get any of that. You just got the art book, which I don't know about yours, but a lot of my pages were sticking together, which is kind of a bummer. You get the CD, the behind-the-scenes DVD, the uh, game game install CDs. You get uh, uh, end-game items. You know, you got the Treasure Goblin for World of Warcraft, Portraits for StarCraft Two, and a little, like, skeletal dog for Diablo 3. I mean, by comparison, is that really worth $100 like the previous Collector's Edition was? I, I just, I don't feel it. Yeah, I, I didn't think that one was worth it at all. I mean, I got it anyways for to put it next to the other one, but that's about it. I basically paid, like, 40 extra dollars for a good-looking box to put next to the other one. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the mouse pads. They both come with mouse pads, but I mean, that's a standard for Blizzard, which I do like. I like I like their mouse pads. Yeah, I wish it would have came with a mouse. It's just like, hey, we know you're going to break one, so here's another one. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be doing a lot of clicking, so... <laughs> Anywho. I, I feel that, and, and this isn't really our main topic, I just want to say this right now. I feel that as the years go by, and I really, this sounds like conspiracy type talk, I really want to blame Activision for this ever since Blizzard and Activision merged. It feels like Blizzard's starting to slack off in the quality of their games and in the quality of their physical copies. Yeah, I I can attest to that. That's Ever since that mark, it's just gone all downhill couple spikes here and there up and then blip. 
Yeah. Anyway, today is not about Blizzard Entertainment and how much dick they suck. <laughs> I love you, Blizzard. <laughs> today is about Elder Scrolls Online. You know why I totally forgot? What's now that? I'm thinking about Blizzard. What we've played over the weekend, but I can do that for the next podcast since it's going to be Blizzard focused. So, moving the focus back to Elder Scrolls Online, uh, I thought that something was pretty interesting, and something that sucked for you was how some people who had the the Head Start access didn't get kicked off while you got kicked off a whole day early. Yeah, my my account went down on the 3rd, like right on the midnight the 3rd my time. So um second to third changeover and other people's are getting extended to the 6th. So I actually had like a little over a day and a half where I just couldn't play the game because it got cut off early. And then when I put in my code today and opened up the launcher, it's like, hey, people's uh, people's uh, early access has been extended to the 6th. I'm like, really? When did that happen? Yeah, it's kind of silly, like, that they would do that. And you know what? Speaking about systems being silly, I haven't logged in yet because I haven't registered my uh, full copy. But as far as I'm aware... I still have not gotten my Beta Pet and Collector's Edition uh, Ritual of Mara item back. Um, I've submitted three tickets. Uh, the first one I got was, yeah, a lot of people have accidentally gotten their items deleted. Don't worry, we're working on a fix for this. We'll update you when something's available. Then uh, I sent in one on the forums, or uh, one on the website, because I went to the forums and the top of the page is like, hey, if you've accidentally deleted your items, contact customer support so we can restore them. So I did that, never got a response using the website's customer support form. <laughs> so then, after waiting until yesterday, which was the last day of the five-day head start, and at this point, I'm nervous as shit. So I'm going, I'm hoping that they'll still restore my pet, because my thought process is, with most big companies and most customer support teams, that if it takes too long for a store, they're eventually just going to default to the, sorry, there's no, nothing we can do about it, you're screwed answer. And I don't really want to be screwed out of my beta pet or my collector's edition perks. Yeah, um, that it, was, it was a stupid. It was a stupid system to begin with. I mean, I get it. They're new at MMOs. This is a new venture for them. But they didn't think that anyone would accidentally delete their, their pets because they start a character and they go... Actually, you know, I think I want to play this instead and and delete the character they had with the items. Like, they didn't think to put up a message like, hey, if you delete your character, you know, any or all items that are attached to this, including collector's edition items, will get uh, destroyed. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, I don't even know what to say. I don't and know, all we can do is not, hope. It's not even like it was just me, because, like, after the first few hours that the beta was open, on the freaking launcher, they put up a warning saying, hey, um, don't delete your characters with your collector's edition items on or you'll lose them. Like, it's not, it's, it's because it's something that nobody would think about comparatively to our MMOs. And I realize I'm going into something we actually argued about last week. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but yeah, that's, that's just a dumb system. And, um, going over one other dumb system that um, is now available because it's actually launch day. Uh, if you actually want to play the game, and you're going to have fun with this one uh, when you open up your box and actually put in your code, you cannot actually apply your game code until you pick a subscription fee. And to pick a subscription fee it has to verify that you have money on whatever you you pick. So if, say, you pick your credit card, say, yeah, I want to, you know, uh, do the fourteen ninety nine monthly fee, it, it back charges your credit card the $15. It doesn't technically charge it. It, it basically just does a verification charge. 
but a lot of banks and credit cards actually charge money for that. So, like, if you're doing an online uh, payment, you'll get charged an extra buck just because. And I, I realize that other games kind of do this. Like, um, who was it? Uh, Star Wars Tor, uh, Terra, all those. When you open it up a new account and you get your your 30 days free game, you had to pick a subscription, but it wouldn't charge anything until your 30 days were up. This one charges you your $15 and puts it on a hold until your 30 days are up. That's... I don't know if I like that. I I definitely don't like it, and there's many, many topics on the ESO forums that are people are pissed because they're like, well, I didn't think I needed the money right now. I don't have it. I can't apply my 30 days free game time until such and such date because I don't have it. And there's um, there's another issue with that system is that if you try and use a Visa or MasterCard to pay for it, you have like a 50-50 chance whether it will actually accept your billing address as a billing address. The other, like, it'll either work or it won't. And there's nothing you can do about it. The only thing you can do is try and contact support, and we all know how well that goes. Oh yeah, support's top-notch, totally. Totally. I, mean, I, I put in a couple tickets that were like instantly done, but I put in several that have been sitting there since like... I don't know, a couple months ago, and I haven't heard a single thing back from. Actually, this is something I should bring up on uh, on that support thing. That uh, third ticket I sent in, in game about my items, which I did get an email reply to, and their email reply was, uh, "We don't handle this. We'll forward your ticket to someone who does." And it's like, oh, you motherfuckers. Um, that third that. ticket I sent in, I sent. Yeah, I sent it. Uh, through the email, because there's either email or talk with a representative, and unless you're okay with just sitting at your computer and staring at your menus for an hour, I wasn't going to do. So, I sent an email, and I'm playing Elder Scrolls all day. Like, that's all I did. I was on Elder Scrolls the entire time, and I got off for the night, went to check my email, and I had an email saying, hey, we're sorry, you weren't online to talk to us. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's, their, their support is already really underwhelming me, and it really feels, like, shady. It feels like, I don't know, I feel like I can't trust them. Like, they're not exactly being entirely, like, honest and upfront with their customers. I, I don't know, if, if anyone has lost your beta pet and your, uh, scroll of Mara or whatever and have already gotten them back I would be very interested in knowing like if you have or haven't because I have been getting the run around with their customer service and it's it's really worrisome because I don't want to want it to take so long to the point they go oh well there's nothing we can do about it you just lost it forever piss off <sighs> the problem with opening up a brand new MMO with absolutely no experience you have absolutely no experience. Yeah. But you know what? There's another company who had absolutely no experience, and now they're the world's number one pay-to-play MMO. So, yeah. never know how things go. Yeah. All right. So, moving on to much positive, or much more positive note. Um, much with... positive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> much positivity would have been better, but... Uh, much more positive note for ESO. Uh, patch 1.0.1 is now live. And probably hasn't been for a couple days, but I just patched it because I uh, just got the ability to play again. But uh, they've actually done a lot of fixes compared to anything they've done in the past half a year. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing. Like I told my uh, the manager at the GameStop I picked my game up with, They've done more bug fixing during the five-day head start than they've done between September 
and the last beta test uh, a few weeks ago, where bugs had just stayed in the beta the entire time. The bugs made it into launch, and then literally, within a few days, they start rolling out all kinds of bug fixes for things that have been bugged for months and months and months. And it's like, why did you even have a beta test? In fact, it feels like the five-day head start isn't even a five-day head start. It feels more like we're beta testing for you because you guys slacked off. It kind of did feel like that, especially when you're like, oh, I'm going to create my character. Why can't I zoom in? Of which is one of the fixed bugs. All right, so skimming through here, we have... Oh, my God, that is a lot of highlighted notes. Okay, so... um. Anybody can read these patch notes. I'll have links down in the description. I'm just going to pick a couple of random ones here. Uh, Alliance War Quest to kill 20 players in Cyrodiil is now daily rather than completely repeatable. That's going to piss a lot of people off, but why wasn't it in the first place? That that seems like a very exploitable thing. See, that seems like something that uh, they didn't think that the player base would sit on the game for literally like 12 hours straight that like a good chunk of the player base was really hardcore and really dead kid so they probably just assumed that ah, it's not gonna be a big big deal and when it launched they saw people using the system just doing it over and over and over again they're probably like oh we should probably fix that yeah just literally like okay well grab quest uh teleport down to the nearest battlefield run in Get the 20 kills, die, teleport, or select where the quest is, go turn it in, grab it again, repeat. And it was a large amount of XP, too. It wasn't just, you know, a little notch here. No, it was like a third of your XP bar between 10 and 20. It makes me wonder if that was... Because there's people who have already hit 50, which, my god, you guys are crazy. Uh... <laughs> It makes me wonder if, like, that may have been one of the methods that they used to get there so fast. It might have been. I mean, it's it's entirely possible. It was the entire quest from beginning to completion. As long as there was a battle somewhere near a a encampment or anything that you could teleport to, it, the total thing took, like, ten minutes. Because all you had to do was... Especially be, if you had... Yeah, I mean, all, all you had to do was get credit for the kill. You didn't have to get the killing blow. All you had to do was either hit the fucker once or heal the person that was hitting him. So it was really easy, especially if you had, like, a targeted AoE or a targeted AoE heal or any kind of targeted something that hit at least multiple people. So, like... <sighs> Any kind of forward cone, just run in, cone a bunch of people, run the fuck away, get the 20 credit, and die. Yeah, it's it's something that, you know, you look at that and you, I don't know, it's, it's, I think it's something that looks good on paper, and they didn't test it thoroughly enough to go, it's not something that's going to work well in practice. Yeah, maybe if it was repeatable, but only the first one per day gave a large amount of XP, but no, it was every single time. Uh, moving on, uh, fixed an issue where you could get dismounted from your horse when jumping over various objects. Yeah, you still get dismounted. Not as often, but you still get dismounted. Um, uh, logged in as soon as the patch uh, download was done and ran around. It took me about 10 minutes before it just decided to randomly dismount me, but it's still there, just not like every five seconds, so that's that's an improvement at least. Um, fixed an issue with fishing where the game client would crash. I didn't do a whole lot of fishing, but that seems like something that should have probably not have even made it to a public build. Dude, that fishing, yo, pretty extreme stuff. <laughs> So graphically intense, it crashes the game. Just watching that little bobber go bloop, 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 bloop. It's like, oh dear God. That's, that's something I do have to say. With a game trying to make its way into the market and become something, something big, you would have figured they would have made a more exciting fishing experience than what World of Warcraft has had for, you know, the past nine years. 
you'd think that they they would have tried. I don't know. Maybe like okay, so you got to watch the bobber and then yank back or like something instead of just hit the button when it's bobbing. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's just it's, it's something that makes me wonder. Like you're not gonna beat World of Warcraft or any other MMO by just doing what's already done. You've got to make some chance, chances and... Yeah, you got to take some chances and make some changes. I'm getting tongue twisted. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, they don't always work out, but fishing's not fun. It's not. It may be relaxing for some people who just want to sit there and dink around. Uh, on a PvP server, on, say, a game like World of Warcraft, I'm cool with it because there's always the chance that someone else will run up to try a fish or try to attack you so you got some action going on. But in Elder Scrolls Online, it's just, this is the same old system we've had for years in other MMOs. It's done to death. It's not fun at all. Make it a mini game of some kind. Like, opening chests, that's fun. Like, the lockpicking main game, I enjoy that. That's fun. Why is the fishing is literally just standing there and, oh, hey, the bobbers jiggled, so reel it in. Okay, you either caught or didn't catch something. I, I just... I don't know why they would stick with such an outdated system for fishing in this game. I don't know. I mean, it's it's not even like mining in Eve where you can just go AFK until you hear something. It's you have to sit there and pay attention because it's a random chance that it will go up and down. And you got to click it. It's very monotonous and very boring. So. Um, probably just gonna be like hey vel you want to go fishing on this because you for some odd reason love fishing on wow it's exactly the same just do it for me please and you know what i can already hear the argument that well what about you know collecting rune stones or what about mining or herbing i mean those are the same monotonous systems but there's a difference imagine if the mining system you went to a node you started it, and then you had to wait there for a random quick action button to appear to successfully mine it. Yeah, fuck that. I, I would, I would not do that. But thank you. I will pass. I, I am a trade skill whore. I, I love doing trade skills in games. But if I had to hit a quick time button just to mine a node, even I would go. No, I'm done. Yeah, and that's basically what fishing is is it's a node, and then you just wait for the notification to push the specific button. It's literally just a quick time event that you have to do over and over and over again. I would be happy if they went back to, like, EverQuest days, where you just found water, hit the button, and waited for it to pop up in your inventory. That would be fine. That, I mean, it'd be macroable, but what the fuck else isn't? But, I don't know, make it, uh... Make it a specific spot on the water that you have to do. Like, it's a, a depletable resource. Like an actual node. Click on it. Wait a couple seconds. It pops up in your inventory. That would be okay. But, because, I mean, that, that would put it in line with the other gathering skills. You walk up to it, and done. But the way they have it now is just so outdated, so boring, and... Yeah, it's got a quick time event, so it has, you know, engagement. It's boring engagement. It's monotonous engagement. It's dull and does not make me want to do it. it. Makes me want to not do it and avoid it as much as possible. And that's really the problem with fishing is you either... And it's because it's such an old and broken system that's become so boring over the years that really you either need to... Remove the monotony and just make it like any other node, or you need to re reinvent the way fishing works and make it a mini game, something fun, something people go. I want to go around for hours and play this little mini game of fishing because it's enjoyable. But the way it is now, it's just it feels like something that's been pulled over from an old, broken, you know, not even previous generation, like two generations ago standard that just really does not fit in a next-gen MMO. And that's, it's really disappointing. I, I don't even know what to say, but what I do know what to say is, moving on to our next topic, 
uh, on the patch notes, which we're not going to list everything. Uh, I found it interesting that they fixed an issue where low-level players were getting high-level food recipes when uh, looting stuff like dressers and whatnot, which I believe you got several high-level recipes while uh, exploring crates and uh, tables and dressers and whatnot in Cyrodiil, didn't you? Uh, in Cyrodiil, yes. I, I mean, I can understand this Cyrodiil. That's supposed to be high-level shit. But on the uh, the second Prophet quest line, where you have to follow um, uh, that giant... Uh, I don't remember what she is. The the one that you your game crashed after, uh, that mine didn't. I got probably two copies of twelve different like you need to have rank six of this recipes that I'm not probably not gonna be able to use for another like two months. The only good thing out of that is you can learn them at any time. You just can't use, the, like, craft that until you have the skill. So it, it wasn't going to take up my inventory for too long until I actually realized that, you know, I could just click it and learn it. But just the fact that I have them there is just taunting me now. I'm like, okay, well, the current one I can make gives me, like, what is it, like 35 stamina for 35 minutes? Well... This one that I can't make, and I'm probably not going to be able to make for a long time, gives me, like, 600-something stamina for 35 minutes. Holy fuck. But you know what? Really, would you prefer it to stay in recipe format and just clog up your inventory space? Which, as we already know, inventory space, when dealing with crafting professions like provisioning, is kind of an issue right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely glad that you can use it without having to be able to craft it. That saves a lot of inventory space. But just the fact that I have them is just taunting me to power train my trade skills. Which, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but I really would have rather gotten something I can make use of to increase my trade skills. Or use different mats with. That's true. But, um... Uh... I was actually trying to segue into our next topic, which is uh, crafting materials everywhere and having not enough backspace to really support it, which, me and you did a little bit of pre-discussion on this with the fact that uh, professions like mining, uh, clothes, clo yeah, I can't say the actual profession name, leatherwork and tailoring combined into one. Clothier. Uh, clothery, whatever, I don't even care. I, I don't, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I'm just a drunk little dwarf doing my little thing, okay? <laughs> okay, continue. You know, professions like uh, woodworking, uh, leatherworking, tailoring, and blacksmithing don't take up much space at all. You've got your rugged leather, you've got your rugged leather scraps, you've got your ore, you've got your ingots, you got your uh, wood, you got your sanded wood planks. I mean, it's really simple. It doesn't take up much space at all. And then, of course, as you get higher level, there'll be new ores. If you look at cooking, enchanting, and alchemy, it's a completely different story. You have different level vials of water. So one vial could make level 1 potions, one vial could make level 3 potions, one vial could make level 7 potions... It's not even something you buy. It, is it something you buy? I'm, nope. I'm actually I'm going to take that back, guys. Nope, can't buy it. Tried. I looked. I you mean, can't. you, you, you might, can't. but not in anywhere that's accessible right now. Okay. So I'll just say I don't know. Uh, you've got vials of water, each one different level. So the water is in different levels for the type of potion you make. You have the herbs, which... There are, if you've played uh, Elder Scrolls game, like, there's a buttload of different herbs that are used in potion craft. And in Elder Scrolls Online, it's like that, starting off from level 1. So you have so many herbs to go through. And then with provisioning, which is the cooking uh, skill, there's so many different, like, ingredients, like salts and, and uh, broths, and just, like, so much you get overwhelmed with in the early game that... I've already filled up my bank completely just with crafting materials. Like, my bank doesn't hold anything except for crafting materials as it stands right now. 
and I can't even fit all my crafting materials in it because there's just like so many uh, enchanting runes, there's so many herbs, there's so many uh, cooking ingredients that it's absolutely ridiculous. I kind of wish that there was a way to better store your crafting material. Or, or, I mean, not even just better way to store it, just minimalize it. And between, okay, so between provisioning one and three, there's six different kinds of broth. That's just between skill rank one and three, and there's a shitload of ranks. I haven't even put any points into it to increase it either. It's just... Hey, you have provisioning three. Each different rank uses two different types of broth. That's not including, you know, the different uh, meats or the different, uh, um, what are they, the uh, the flowers, anything like that. It's just, yeah, there's, there's a shit ton. Like, okay, so one of the things is, um, what is it, white grain salt. And then there's grain salt. Why can't those just be the same thing? I have no idea. And really, it's it falls back to the same issue with fishing is we're really using a outdated system for storing the stuff. Something that World of Warcraft's moving away, you know, with uh, how they store some items. And I think really the best game to handle crafting material specifically that I've seen yet is Guild Wars 2 with the ability to just store them away in massive quantities by right clicking and, and what is it put in storage or something like that yeah I don't remember what the actual menu is called but it's literally just a bag or a, a basically just a personal bank that's applicable for all characters on the account by the way because it's a entirely shared bank but it's got a slot for every type of crafting material, and you can stack it. I think up to, I think up to a thousand now, because they keep increasing it because people yep. keep getting more. That would be a wonderful system for this game because there's so many different crafting materials that you're not gonna have enough room for it all. And see, that's the biggest problem is because I played the Elder Scrolls game since Morrowind. I wish I could have said I played since Daggerfall, but I'd be lying. Uh, and you have places to store your stuff. I mean, when you get a house in any of those games, you, like, get so many containers. You can upgrade to get more containers. Like, you have, like, all this storage space. But this is an MMO. And houses have not been implemented yet. They said they want to eventually, but they're not sure when. So until then, we're stuck with the bank, which you get 60 slots right off the start. And then it's a thousand gold for like the first upgrade, and you will blow through those sixty slots so fast. Like, uh, like I said, all my slots are filled with crafting materials: the different ores and woods, the different herbs, the different uh, uh, provisioning ingredients, all that. And my bank is full. Like, there's just so much that I really wish that they would at least have had houses in the game. That's what I wish because that way I at least have multiple different chests of storage i can organize everything the way i want but as it stands right now my bank is just a clusterfuck of materials and i have nowhere else to store anything yeah my my entire 60 slot bank was full by the time we like got to the first banker npc that's how bad it was and i've actually upgraded it twice and it's still full and I've upgraded my, my personal inventory twice, and put a couple points into my horse, which increases my inventory. It's that bad. Yeah, it's just it's an archaic system that has been brought over from generations past, and I'm not sure if it's because they felt that they needed to make it MMO-ish, so they're looking back at what made other MMOs good, instead of trying to go forward and change things up. Uh... Like I said, I, what, uh, I never expected this game to be Skyrim Online. I never expected it to be too close to Elder Scrolls. I, I mean, it's an MMO. They've got to make some concessions to, to actually make it work and function. But the fact that it didn't launch with like player housing and that the way the banks work right now, I really have such a limited amount of space that all of my crafting materials are in my bank, and if I got anything else that maybe I want to bank or store away for later, 
like a uh, weapon to research. I want to uh, use it in research, but maybe I'm already researching something. I either have to keep it on my character or get rid of it and hope I get another one. It's just, it's kind of disappointing. I wish there was more storage. And <sighs> today's supposed to be a happy day, goddammit. And here we are <laughs> complaining. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anywho, moving on, um, there are many, many quests that were fixed that were basically just game-breaking at the time, and I am not going to read all of the text, I'm just going to list the quests that were fixed. Um, uh, in the Name of the Queen, New in Town, Prove Your Worth, Bloodthorn Assassins, Legacy of Baleborn Rock... Uh, Veil of the Guardians, The Perils of Diplomacy, Shornhelm Divided, Breath of uh, Death of Balareth, and Restoring the Guardians. And if you were watching our, our stream uh, earlier last or this week, uh, we actually tried the Death of Balareth several times and could not get it to work. So I'm glad those or I'm glad that's fixed, and we're probably gonna after we're done here uh, hop on and try and do that again. There's no excuse, though. I mean, we talked about this in the previous podcast that we did on the, uh, the 31st of March. Death of Baldroth has been bugged since September of 2013, and they just got around to fixing that. What the fuck? <laughs> I have no idea. God damn it, Xenomax. But at least it's fixed now, so, you know, whatever. If we break it again, oh, we will we will discuss it, don't you worry. <laughs> if we break it again, there will probably be, like, a ten-minute minicast tomorrow. <laughs> Just going, what the <laughs> fuck? Okay, so, um, for, for anybody who, who started the game eh, before this 101 patch and noticed that the intro cinematic looked like it was a very badly buffered YouTube video. Uh, good news, that's fixed. It's now nice and high quality. Why? Why was the intro video so bad? It doesn't even make sense. It's not like they're streaming the intro video. It's, it's, it's in the game files. Why was it so low quality? <laughs> no. But it was hilarious. I was, I was watching it, like, when I first started up the game. I'm like... Did, did they only have it in, like, 480p or something? It's itty-bitty stretching across my screen. My first thought was, wait, did they decide not to put the uh, Cinemac in the uh, game files to try and alleviate some size? Is this being streamed right now? What happens if if the servers are, like, running slow or something? I mean, streaming a video is going to take a lot of server power. It's just, like, it's, it's, it's an end-game file that looks like a YouTube video put up, like, seven or eight years ago. Like, it, it was just like, how is it so bad? It reminded me of when I tried to play uh, Warcraft 2, like, last year. I was like, oh god, this intro cinematic used to be awesome, and now it's, like, eight pixels total. It was that bad. Yeah, it's... It, you could see, like, each individual little, like, chunk was being buffered. I don't know. I don't want again to, to, to complain again because I love this game and today's friggin' podcast is supposed to be like, hey, you know, they fixed all this stuff. Good job, Zenimax. You're, you're doing good things. And it just kind of drifted off into complaining. I'm, I'm wondering if we should rename the podcast Warven Complaints. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just been negative lately. Um... I don't know. Should I bring up the 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 next thing, the uh, textural warning? Uh oh, god! <laughs> you mean the fact that somehow a company based in America with a game that was created and based in America has a warning message when deleting your character? that you'll lose your items in German and French, but not in English? <laughs> yep, that one. What the fuck? <laughs> it 
doesn't even make fucking sense. You guys are an American company. Why is it in German and fucking French, but not in goddamn English? <laughs> oh god, I can't breathe. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure I just spiked the audio there, but guys, what the hell? Oh, you did. Oh, you did. And oh, what the fuck? I, I don't even know. I don't even. My brain is melted. It is mush. It, it just doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, this is a game. Built in America. How hard is it to make a freaking English translation for that message? Hey, don't delete your character, stupid. You'll lose your shit. <laughs> How hard is that? I want the message to say that. Exactly that. Just don't delete your character, stupid. You'll lose your shit. That would get people's attention. It's a mature game, so I mean... <laughs> yeah. It just... Ah! Of all the patch notes, I just cringed so hard the moment I read that. Because it's like... Why? How? Like, is it that hard to make an English message? You've got it in German and French, but as an American company, you can't put it in Eng I just... Why? Is Are these late April Fool's jokes? Am I being trolled here, Zinemax? I, I don't know. That, that would be actually kind of an awesome April Fool's joke. Yeah, you know, only uh, three days late. Eh, three days late's better than ever. Yeah. Well... <sighs> Aside from that, you know, one shimmer of hope, one thing that makes me happy, and I'm having such a hard time talking straight right now because my mind has literally been fucked eight ways by Zenimax with that section of the patch note. <laughs> uh, the Rifts, which when we played, we first discovered the Rift really early on. I think we were like level six, and we discovered the first rift in the no northern area of Stone Falls, I believe is what it's called. And we went there, and there's the chains and the rift, and nothing there. There's nothing there. Nothing you can interact with. No enemies. Nothing. So we we're like, okay, uh, do we have to progress, like, the harbor bridge or something to, like, get an item to close the rifts? Like, can we not do the event, whatever? No, it turned out that uh, rifts were broken, and uh, there's actually supposed to be cultists at the bottom of the rift. You're supposed to kill the cultists and summon a boss, kill the boss, and then use the item that the boss has to close down the rift. We have worked for other portals. When we were in uh, Cyrodiil, we came across two uh, rifts that worked just fine. I mean, we walked up on the first one, right? And it's just like this little altar area, and we see like some cultists in a line, and we're like, what in the world's going on here? Next thing we know, they like start talking and chanting, and a rift opens up and the chains fall down. It's just like some huge, massive event that was amazing to see. And it's like, okay, that works. We tried to kill them. We got our asses kicked, just a heads up, because it's <laughs> group content is where it's, yeah, where it's designed those hurt. to be. Those hurt. I mean, we killed, I think, like a third of them, but we just did not have the power to take the rest of them. Yeah, we killed three out of five, and, you know, that was that was pretty good, but it's group content, and apparently the boss is supposed to be even stronger, but whatever. Basically, the rift was broken in Stone Falls. Apparently, rifts are fixed now, so when we get in, uh, before we go to Balroth, because it's on the way, or was it pronounced Balroth? I don't even care. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to the rift. We're going to hope it's fixed, and we're going to try it. But it's such a cool event, because, like, you have to admit, when we were when we were uh, going through Cyrodiil, and we happened upon that, and we saw like the whole little event play out, and they summoned the the uh, rift in the sky and such and so forth. That was really cool. Like that was that was something that made exploring feel really fun because it's something that happened before us. I I just love. Yeah, it, it was actually really fun. It was really cool to see, and you're just like, oh, what are these guys doing? Oh dear God, I'm going to die. Yep. But when we were in Stone Falls, we just walked up, the rift's all the way open, the chains are there, and we're just, like, looking around, we're like, okay, well, it looks like there's supposed to be some, like, pedestals or something, what is even going on? Because there's nothing anywhere around, and, I don't know, supposedly they got that fixed, I'm really hoping so, because rifts are awesome, I love watching the rift events start, 
I am super excited to see what the bosses are like. Apparently, um, rifts have higher drop chances for items. So it's kind of like, uh, it's group content. Something that's been getting cut out of MMO after MMO after MMO for so long. It's group content out and about in the world. And I couldn't be more excited to try it. Yeah, and actually I was reading up on the forums a little bit about what was breaking the rift. And one of the devs actually mentioned that occasionally the NPCs would not respawn and the rift would not despawn. After a while of being idle, after it started, it's supposed to reset back to null, but it just wasn't for some reason. So, like, someone would kill the 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 uh, the cultists, but they didn't kill the boss, or they couldn't kill the boss... After a while, it's supposed to reset and respawn the cultists. Well, the boss despawned, but the rift itself did not reset. Yeah, so hopefully that's fixed. Uh, like we said, you know, there's a full list of the patch notes, which will be linked to in our comment below. Um, they've fixed so much stuff over the five-day head start to launch, which is today, compared to what they did in beta... I don't really want to get off into a rant in that again. Let's just be thankful that things are finally getting fixed. Hopefully, this won't put a negative smudge on The Elder Scrolls Online's name because it is a fun game. Like, I have been playing it the entire five-day head start. Uh, Tana here has been playing a little bit of Kerbal Space Program. I couldn't play the game! Not my fault! Not my problem! <laughs> Goddamn, sounds like a you problem! KSP is fun, and when you can't log into the game you want to play, KSP is a very good time passer. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we're going to be ending this podcast, wrapping it up. Uh, I'm just going to be blunt about that. I'm not going to try to segue. I'm not going to try to, you know, make it not just, hey guys, we're going to end the podcast now. But... I really want to get back into Elder Scrolls Online. I really want to unbox my collector's edition. It's really <laughs> sitting right next to me, acting as an armrest right now, while I just wait for this to finally get over so I can look at all the cool swag that come with it, you know? It is literally that tall to play armrest. It is massive. All right, so... Yeah, so. <laughs> so let's end this and let you open your box and put your key in, and, uh, yeah... Yep. So uh, thank you again for you know tuning into our podcast. It's still a small thing. We're trying to keep this really personal. We're trying to keep this uh, more open, flowing discussion instead of just like uh, this is the news for this game. Blah 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 blah. Patch note. Read from top to bottom. You know, it's supposed to be a really uh, personal, just discussion back and forth. It's it's the whole reason it's called dwarven discussions is it's just it's a bath back and a bath a back and forth uh discussion <laughs> of pretty much what we're into at the time video games all that stuff so uh if you have a different opinion if you want to make a comment you know leave them below uh if you like this video like favorite subscribe share all that uh i don't really know what to say except see you guys all in tamriel all righty uh, goodbye, and I will have a minor, maybe a minute, maybe two minute long video later, uh, announcing who got the, um, who got the Humble Bundle thing that I've been trying to give away for a couple of weeks now. <coughs> oh, we actually got comments? Yep. Oh, fantastic. Was there anything good, or was it just like, shut the fuck up and give me my key? <laughs> yeah, it, it was actually a very, very long and very thought out uh, post and comment. I'll have to look at that because I, I, like I said, I, I said this before, I want you guys to leave comments down below because I do enjoy engaging in discussion. Actually, before we wrap this up, you know, story time, uh, I am so into discussing video games and and stuff like this to the point that uh, I've played a game for 99 minutes, and I've wrote in, uh, wrote in, written, can't, I, trust me, I'm better on word than I am in, in, in person. Like, put me on the page and I'm much better. Uh, <clears throat> I've written 
like four page like game reviews on bad games with you know like 99 minutes of gameplay i i go into super death i love super death super depth you really can't talk today can you i've been having problems the past few days i'm wondering if i have stroke or something <laughs> well here's hoping not yeah but you know i love to discuss with you guys you know keep it civil of course negative negative and and conflicting opinions awesome I can't wait to uh, read the the posts, but needless to say, guys, you're going to see that I have no life when I reply to your topic, your post, with like 200 plus lines of text. So get ready for long, in-depth discussions. <laughs> yeah, he, do, he does kind of go on and on and on. But it's all good read. It's all good information. So you, you really should read it and not look for a TLDR. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, it turned out a little more ranty than I was hoping, but still, all in all, you know, good things coming to the Elder Scrolls Online. Good Collector's Edition, one of the best we've seen in a long time. Uh, really, it's a good game. Go out there, pick up a copy. I promise you will not be disappointed. So until we see you guys again, uh, we'll be in Tamriel. Uh, if you are Aldemar Dominion, you're dead. <laughs> Peace. Bye.